In the last two lectures, we said that the only things which don't need an inertial frame to specify are things which are the same in all inertial frames. And it turns out, in our universe, the speed of light is something that is the same in all inertial frames. And that speed is finite and fixed. We'll denote it by the letter C to represent the speed of light. Today, we're going, we're going to start to understand how this apparent contradiction can possibly be true and what relativity is about. We're going to set up the following thought experiment. Looking from above at a fast-moving train, if a passenger on the train throws a ball in a straight line at the train wall, so this is our passenger, he'll throw a straight ball, he'll throw a ball in a straight line at the train wall, like this, the ball will bounce straight back at the passenger. The passenger will see the ball travel distance two times d, if this is the width of the train. d is also going to be the speed of the ball times the time in flight. A person looking from above, however, will see the ball make a v-shape because the train is also moving. So let's say the person doesn't see the train. The person from above doesn't see the train and sees just the ground. And in this ground, I'll draw the ball's trajectory in gray, he sees the ball go like this in a V. So the distance it has traveled in this direction is still D. However, it also travels a distance horizontally here, let's say this is equal to 2 times b, where b is the speed of the train times the amount of time the ball has flown. I'll draw these more clearly on the next page. So again, on the left, the passenger sees that the ball has traveled 2d whereas a stationary observer sees that the ball has traveled the diagonal distance here, which by the Pythagorean theorem is given by 2 times the square root of d squared plus b squared. So far, so good. Now, let's put a mirror on the wall and change the ball with light. Light will make the same path as a very fast ball, a line bouncing straight into the mirror and back. Uh, from the passenger's point of view, and the V-shape from a stationary observer's point of view. The distance d again will be equal to the speed of light times the time traveled, and the diagonal distance here will again be equal to d squared, the speed of light times time traveled, plus b squared, which b is the speed of the train still, times the time light has traveled. So the two observers saw light travel different distances. Yet we know that they both must have also seen light travel at the same speed. So how can this be, since these distances are not equal? Well, speed is equal to distance over time. So for speed to be the same, if distance is different, then the time must also be different for the two observers. So let's back up a second. This means that the, observer, the passenger on the train must have seen light travel for a time t different than the stationary observer looking at the train pass. Call this t prime. How different? Well, exactly different enough to make these two speeds equal. If we do some algebra, which I'll show here, rather, in the next lecture, I will show the algebra that shows exactly how these two times are related.